Okay, this is the magnetism lab. For those of you who are in uh, Physics 101L, that's fine. Pa page 93 in the Physics uh, 101L lab manual is where it starts. But we're actually going to start on page 95. If you're in Physics 102 or Physical Science 103, the page numbers aren't the same as I'm telling you. Uh, but for 101L students, that's, uh, let's turn to page 95. And what it says to do first is to check the compasses and make sure the polarity is right. Well, let's see, yeah, that points pretty much toward north. See the red needle is pointing to, toward geomagnetic north. And uh, the, uh, by the way, geomagnetic north is actually a magnetic south pole. That's why the north end of a magnet points toward it, as we'll see in a bit. So just be aware, there's magnetic north, there is geomagnetic north, and there's a thing called, that some people call true north. Uh, true north being where the, uh, the point, of the, uh, true north and south poles lie on the axis on which the Earth spins. Geomagnetic north and south poles are magnetic poles, but the, magnetic, the geomagnetic north pole is a magnetic south pole. Hmm. So, yeah, let's see, let's take this other compass too. Yeah, let's wait till it stops moving. Okay, it's moving pretty well too. They're pretty much in agreement with each other. They're a little bit off. This table here is, has magnetic properties in it. We get too close to the video camera. It has uh, magnetic materials there too. So I, that's why I held them in the air. Well, let's see what I was talking about, about north poles and south poles. Here's a magnet, and it has an N on this end, label, labeling it that that's the north pole of the magnet. That's a magnetic north pole. Here is a magnetic south pole on a magnet. It's on this little boat so it can float. And I'm going to take and bring, let's see, what does it say first? On page, uh, the first page of the magnetic thing, it says after checking the polarity, uh, floating a bar magnet in the water, you notice the north pole points toward geomagnetic north. Hmm, that way. True north is more this way, but geomagnetic north is sort of that way. Now, if I, now the next thing it says bring. Uh, like poles near each other. So I have a north pole here. I'm going to bring it near. Float this out here a bit. I'm going to bring it near the north pole of this magnet. And look at it. It repels. Look at it spin away. Well, the very next question on, the, on your sheet says, we'll bring up just unlike poles near each other. So we'll bring a south pole near a north pole. And look at that. The north pole is attracted to the south pole. That's how the ancients discovered magnetism, was they took rocks and found out if they did this with rocks, some rocks, that they found that there were one side of a rock was attracted to a certain side of another rock. You turn either rock around and that's repulsion. Yeah. And so they say north poles repel each other, south poles repel each other, but if you did dissimilar poles, a north and a south pole, there's an attraction. Hmm. Okay, um, so now we also want to do a thing here. Now this is more like a, f so on your sheet there, uh, we did the polarity check, which is step one, to see the compasses were aligned right. We did the result, uh, we did the floating bar magnet with light poles and unlike poles. Do you describe there what happened, what you saw here in this video? The next thing is, we want to see how distance we, affects force between the objects. Um, this video lab is going to be a little different than you would do it probably in person, but uh, I'm going to do it with a boat. And the idea being that, yeah, the uh, distance has quite an effect. Whoops, the boat got docked against the side. Very little repulsion, more repulsion, a lot of repulsion. Okay. That's a little different than probably the procedure has doing it in person. I'm going to have you do that. Now, we want to see what these magnetic fields look like. Hmm. Hmm. So what we're going to do is something a little different. Now we're going to take and use iron filings. Let me put this in the sink for a moment. So I want that magnet. I'm going to put this off to the side for a bit because I'm going to put there. A board, an ordinary board with a slot in it. I'm going to take a magnet 
and I'm going to put it in there. I'm going to take a clear sheet of plastic, put over the top of that, and let's see, your lab manual says to go ahead and put a piece of white paper on top of that. Okay, and then I'm going to take some iron filings, a shaker here of iron filings, and I am going to take and sprinkle them on top of the white paper. The reason we want to do this is iron, to show you that, is actually, a, uh, magnets are attracted to ferromagnetic materials like iron. Oh, look at that, there's an attraction there. Hmm. So I'm going to take a little iron filings, and each one of these will be attracted to the magnetic field. And we're going to see what magnetic field lines look like. You see them in your textbook. Okay, these aren't the now these magnets. You see, there's lines that come out of the North Pole, and you can't see it because it goes off the paper. They come clear around to the South Pole, real close. And you can see it. Look, North Pole, zhook, around to South Pole. Well, it's kind of like this bar magnet is kind of like two many different magnets here. The center part, and it feels going out the side. Yeah, um, that's an unusual magnet, but that's what you're going to draw. Tilt that up toward the board for a moment. Tilt it up here. Uh, what they want you to see is if you have a bar magnet with a north pole and a south pole, the idea is that these lines come, well you can't see a direction here, I'll show that to you in a moment, uh, out the north pole, they come back in the south pole. And so if I go around the side here, they go around. You see diagrams like this in the book. Now, when you enclose, you get things like this. Or you might see several bumps or something and things such like that. Uh, so the idea is the North Pole, when a line goes out of North Pole, it always comes back somewhere to a South Pole, either on the same magnet or a different magnet. Hmm. And so to kind of see it the way the ancients saw it was by sprinkling iron filings like this. And you see a pattern like that showing the lines. Now, you can't see the directions of the lines, so I'm going to take a little... Uh, compass here, the lab manual would have you take and actually put on the paper and put little arrows on every line. But see the red, the red north pole points that way, that's the way the beef, the, these magnetic field lines go, and the south pole points where they came from. If I go around, see so you can actually see the direction. We're not going to do that so much in this video form, but look, look at this. See the south pole? They're coming back into the south pole. See the red arrow pointing into the south pole. It's kind of hard to see. If I go around the sides, you see it there. Here they're coming into the thing and over here. They're going out of the, th out of the thing, going around. See that? It's showing it's going around this way. So that's how you do that. So let's take a look at your sheet where it says, first of all, um, I think it's number six on your thing. It says, sketch the pattern of iron filings in the magnetic field. You can do a sketch what I just showed you on the board, or sketch that. Hmm, that one's harder. But you can kind of see that there. Let me take and do something real quick. I'm going to take and save all the iron filings. They cost money. Used to be easy to get iron filings. Just go to any machine shop and they would grind off iron filings for you. Let me switch magnets and see if the other magnet does any different. Oops, North Pole, there, there, try another magnet real quick, ah, it would help if I put the top on the shaker, we might edit that out. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> okay, so we'll take a shaker here and let's see what it looks any different. No, this one, the lines are clear to see. I like this one. Okay. So there you can see the magnetic field lines. They're coming out the North Pole. As this little magnet shows. Shows the red arrow. Whoops, I bumped the paper. That messed up the diagram. <laughs> um, the red arrow shows that they're coming out this way. They're going around, around. See the red arrow still pointing that way? Round. Oh look, they're coming back in the South Pole. Now some of, most of them go off the paper and come back on. Okay. But the big idea is that if, if, if a line comes out a North Pole, it comes in a South Pole, either on the same magnet or some other magnet. Hmm. All right, so there, you, could, this, you can draw this on your diagram. Draw the lines going out, going off the paper, coming in from the outside of the paper. Here they're on the paper, just going around North Pole to South Pole. Right, same on this side. Yeah, you draw lines. Hmm, hmm. Okay, and again, just show to pan up and see the one on my board. So I kind of drew what, kind of what you're drawing there. See, I draw very crudely, don't I? That's okay. The basic big thing is it's okay to see that, yeah, a lot, most of the lines just went off the paper and then they come back on from off the paper. Some actually were close and went right on the paper around in from north to south pole. Only the compass would show the direction, whether it's going this way or this way, and we saw it's coming out the north pole and in the south pole. Ah, ah, when you look on the internet to try to find out these quantities that these represent, they either use a symbol B or H. Hmm different units depending on which one they use and there's more about that later but maybe in a uh, another course past 101 L or 102 or or physical science 103 all right we'll pan back down to this let's go back to this diagram now I see that with one magnet I said that the field lines could go off and to another magnet let's actually make that happen Let's make the field lines go to another magnet. So I'll save the paper, the filings. I'll remember to put the top on. I'm going to take, and we'll take two magnets. When did you know I put that right in the water? Okay. And let's see. There's more than one arrangement we could do. We could do it with them both, have the north poles the same way or with one north, one south. The first thing it says to do is, okay, the first one it says with opposite, so it's like a north pole at that end, a south pole on the same end. Let's do that. I may have, a, in your lab manual, it may have a different uh, order. Maybe they do both north and north on the same first, then it's north and south. On the 101 L lab manual, I think it has north on this end and south on the same end. We cover it up, we'll take a piece of paper, Okay, let's try it now. So the north pole on this magnet is that way, south pole on this magnet is that way. And we sprinkle the iron filings on. And sure enough, as I kind of was saying, you can see each magnet still has kind of the same pattern it had before, except look how the lines just go across to each other. Hmm, north pole to south pole. Zhook! and from North Pole to South Pole, like that. So see, the, the, the alliance can wind up on another magnet. Outside, it's still the same. North going off and going around to south. Here, North going around to south. Just make sure so you can see with a... See there that the north is coming out that way toward the camera, sort of toward you. Over here, the south, it's coming in the south pole, and so on. Huh. Okay. Uh, the next thing it said is, turn the two magnets the same way so both north ends are that way. We'll do that next. Take the iron filings and save them. Quickly 
turn this around. Whoops. North pole, north pole. Put the cap back on here. Put a paper on. White paper lets you see it. And now I see the north pole is on the same end. What's going to happen now? Hmm. It's a little harder to predict. Well, very similar to when we had just one magnet. Uh, the only thing is, when it comes out of the North Pole, it can either go to the South Pole, this magnet. Out of the North Pole, it could actually go across here into the South Pole here. Hard to see that. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, so it looks almost like just it was single magnets without the other one there. Almost. It's kind of hard to see that one effect where it crosses over or comes out the North Pole and maybe crosses over to the south of the other one. Hmm. But otherwise, it's pretty much the same, so you can draw that. All right. That finishes off that. So we see the field lines are there. And uh, just to make sure you see, yes, the uh, North is coming out the North Pole. It's almost like one magnet there. Huh. Except for the stuff you can see between that's happening there. All right, so I'll put that away. Save the iron filings. Eighty-five. Oh, okay. Now we get to do some fun things. For this, because it's a video, I'm going to get a bigger compass. So I'm going to compass this full size. Okay. Here's a famous experiment. I have here a compass that's pointing roughly magnetic north, roughly because this table here is kind of interfering, but it's okay, it's pretty close to it. I'm gonna put a wire that's just along it like that on top. Now I'm gonna put a current through the wire and watch what happens. Oh, by the way, the current is flowing this way. Is that right? Yes, positive current. Positive current flow, conventional current flow is flowing that way. Electron current flows the opposite way. Okay, I turn this on. Look at that. It puts almost 90 degrees from where it was. That's because I'm putting a pretty strong current. Can't go over 5 amps in these wires or they might melt. Hmm. Well, let's take and put the wire underneath it. You notice it tilted that way. If I put the wire underneath, this is the famous Orsted experiment. Now I'll do it with the wire underneath. Hey, it went the opposite way. It went this way. Well, how about that? With the power off, it just stays going that way. Hmm. If I put the wire on top it and the current was going that way, it deflected that way. If I put it underneath and the current was still going that way, it deflected this way. You know something? The lab manual does, does not ask you to do this, but let's take and do it this way. Let's do it underneath with the current going this way. Kind of hard to get that balanced on there. Okay, I'll turn it on. Look, it went that way. That current was going, positive current was going this way. Let's put the wire on top, it's easier to do. Okay, turn it on. It goes this way. Famous Orsted experiment. Let's take a closer look at what's going on there. This is kind of odd. So we'll take and go to a longer wire. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to put a wire vertical. This is one that's much easier to do with a lab partner. That's why we usually do this with a lab partner. And because uh, it's very hard to do with our video to hold a wire straight up and down and put a compass around it. Let me turn the power on. We never want to put more than five amps to these wires. Okay, and I'm going to take and let's see, we have, we have this compass, so I see it's showing the field lines. Look at that, they go around the wire. Hmm, now there's some interference here because True North is over there 
But see, look at that. No matter how I do it, it's going to go around the wire. Now the current is going up that way. So the right-hand rule is like this. There's more than one right-hand rule, but they're all based off the same mathematical concept. If I put my thumb in the direction of the positive, that is conventional current, my fingers curl the way that the field goes around the wire. And you can see that. There it is. As the thing goes around the wire. Okay. Um, so now we've seen with a straight wire, a compass, you know, above and below a wire as, a, as the current was applied. Uh, we've seen uh, it with a vertical wire and the, and the compass going around it. Now what I want to do is do the coil. I'm going to turn this power supply down to 2 amps at the most because I do not want to put more than 2 amps in the coil. Uh, we can put one amp, 5 amps through these wires and they won't melt. The, Coil should not melt with two up to two amps. Here now I've taken and we're going to instead of putting a straight wire, we're going to put the current no less more than two amps through this coil. And it's hard to tell does the coil run this way or does it run this way? Hmm. Well, one way of finding out is put a compass around it. Hmm. It looks like that's a south pole there. You know, I don't like it that way. I'm going to take and switch the wires because I want the other end to be north. Just my preference. Okay, and this ends the north end now. And the field lines go around, around. If you look over in this end, that's the south pole. North pole. It's just like a bar magnet. Except we can turn it on and off. Hey, I wonder, can this thing pick up a paper clip? You used to be able to pick up paper clips with these things. Nah, it's not quite strong enough. Power, so now I'm going to take an iron bar. And stick it inside there. Why am I doing that? Well, now it picks up a paper clip. In fact, it's strong enough now. Can throw some nails out there and it look it picks up the nails. Whoops, and I dropped the iron bar out. What's happening? And let's take a look at the field with the compass now. Remember the compass was weak before, the magnetic field of the earth was just about as strong as it. Now it is a strong magnetic field. Look at that. Whoops, wait a second. Get it back on here in the camera's view so you can see what I'm saying. See that? All the way out here to the South Pole. It's a strong magnetic field. Hmm. Okay. What's happening there? Okay. What's happening there when we put the iron bar in? Iron is a, mag is a ferromagnetic material. Uh, a ferromagnetic material has a property that its electrons tend to lie, align a certain way. See, electrons spin on their own axis. And in spinning, they become little magnets themselves. Every electron in an atom is a, is a, is a magnet. Well, in ferromagnetic materials, if an electron lines its north pole a certain way, the other atoms around it tend to do the same thing. They line up. Not all of them. No, there's fluctuation and everything, but a lot of them tend to line up together. Especially if you take and put a magnetic field around iron. Like when we took that iron bar and applied with a coil a field to it, the electrons, being little magnets themselves, they like to turn to point the same way that that, 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 that field is being applied. Not all of them, but quite a lot of them. And so that's what a ferromagnetic material does and why iron, when you put it inside the magnet, it tends to become a magnet itself and enhances the magnetic field. Hmm. However, 
a lot of other materials. A lot of materials are not ferromagnetic or paramagnetic. They're what they call diamagnetic. And with them, if one electron has its magnetic field pointing one way, a neighboring electron tends to t uh, turn the opposite way, roughly so to speak. The, uh, now, they call those electrons paired, and, it's a, and with a diamagnetic material, one magnet kind of counteracts the effect of the other one. One electron counteracts the magnetic effect of the, magnetic effect of the other electron. And so, you think, oh, well, then the magnet has no effect on the diamagnetic, diamagnetic material. Because of some advanced effects, it turns out in a laboratory, diamagnetic materials tend to slightly repel a magnet, or a magnet repels them. The effect is very slight, and you need laboratory instruments to detect that. Hmm. Well, you wouldn't just see it necessarily. Well, some diamagnetic materials repel enough that you can actually sense it. You can actually hang it on a string and see the effect. Okay, so we've seen ferromagnetic and diamagnetic materials. I have trouble saying the G in magnetic and diamagnetic and ferromagnetic. Um, so, that was, uh, so be careful of if, if my pronunciation may be a little bit off. Mag, so magnetic, magnetic. Sorry. Cut. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay, I have a little, it's on, right? I have a little trouble saying magnet. And uh, the, so when I'm saying ferromagnetic, it's the G sound in there, it's hard for me to pronounce. When I'm saying diamagnetic, diamagnetic. So I'm gonna pronounce my T's as a D, and my G is so silent. Did you hear it? <laughs> okay. So be careful, I'm, I'm, don't pick up my bad pronunciation. Magnet, diamagnetic, ferromagnetic. Mag, so I'll say magnetic. <laughs> okay. So that's, so the first question, discussion question here, it says, so uh, what is the, what does the iron, why does the iron core uh, make the field strength stronger? It's because of those unpaired electrons. So, the next question is kind of, at this point, is philosophical. What is a magnetic field? If you were in taking lots of physics courses, they would tell you that a magnetic field is a relativistic tra transformation of an electric field. That's a lot of math. In this course, we say a magnetic field is a field that goes around from a north pole to a south pole. There's, if there's a north pole, there's always a south pole somewhere. If there's a south pole, magnetic south pole, there's always a magnetic north pole somewhere. If you had just one, suppose you had a magnetic north pole and no south pole corresponding, that'd be called a magnetic monopole. Hmm. As far as we know, magnetic monopoles do not exist. If they do, we have to change some of our equations in, in electrodynamics. Hmm. So a magnetic field is a field that goes around from a north pole to a south pole. Something we did not see in this experiment, but you'd see in a later experiment, is that the, uh, uh, <coughs> the magnetic field pushes on moving charge, not on charge itself, but moving charge. <laughs> we don't see that though yet. <coughs> what is a magnetic line of force? We saw them on the paper there. That's basically a, what the idea of that is is if you have a magnetic field <coughs> at each point of the field line, <coughs> the uh, magnetic field is a vector. Oh, it's a vector. Vectors have magnitude and direction. The vectors are tangent to the field line. Okay, they're tangent to the field line. Mm. And uh, 
in a, in a way, you can imagine a field line as though there were invisible microscopic magnets all along it, each one having a north and south pole. Are there really magnets there? Not necessarily. No, it could be a vacuum. But it's like that, in a way. It's, it's almost like there's a bunch of magnets because the, the vectors, the magnetic field vectors, which in your textbook, either you, I think they use B, some books they use H, and that's different units, okay? The B, B vector is tangent to that field line. Um, how do you say that in words? I know some of you are going to try and draw it. It's, I guess that's okay for me. Uh, what actually is a magnetic pole? And the magnetic pole <coughs> is the end of something about which either the, where the B field goes out, that's the North Pole, or the B field comes in, South Pole. Hmm. And uh, the interesting thing is you say, couldn't I get a magnetic monopole by taking a magnet? north and south, and we'll cut it. We'll cut it in two. And if you cut it in two, you say, ha, I've got a north pole. I can take it out separate. I got a south pole. No, it doesn't work that way. Each piece would become a magnet with a north and south pole. Okay. Boy, people have tried to, to make a, a model of a magnetic monopole. They took a whole bunch of magnets and made a sphere with south poles in and the north poles out. Nope, the field line just go out the north pole and around to the south pole, no matter what they do. Hmm. Um, or from the north pole to some other south pole and uh, from some other north pole to the south pole. It always happens that way. Um, so now you want to summarize the rule for predicting the direction of the magnetic field surrounding a straight wire. And either in lecture or your textbook, there are several right-hand rules. The right-hand rule you have for this, if a current is flowing, positive current now, conventional current, flowing that way, or a, a positive charge is moving that way, either one, your fingers point the direction the magnetic field forms around it. Mm -hmm. What about a negative charge? Well, if the negative charge is going that way, turn your thumb the opposite way because we're interested in the way positive flow goes. And now the magnetic field goes this way around. Even though the electron is going that way, it has a negative charge. The minus sign turns the vector around. Remember, if you take a vector and multiply it by negative one, it just turns the vector around. And then it asks, summarize the rule for predicting the direction of a magnetic field. Wait, is that the same question? Oh, so, uh, summarize the, the, the rule for uh, predicting uh, the direction of a magnetic field surrounding a co coil of wire, a coiled wire, so a coil. Well, remember we, do, we had, I couldn't tell which way this thing was wound, so I'll have to tell you, because you saw this in lecture or in the textbook. If the cu positive current is flowing that way around the coil, another right-hand rule, your thumb points the direction of the magnetic, of the magnetic field, the B field. North, north is this end, if it goes that way around. Hmm, because the, the magnetic field comes out that way. All these right-hand rules are related to something in math called a cross product in vector calculus. Ah, that's math, which is the heart of physics, really. But um, Now, summarize the rule for the interaction of magnets. They wanted you to say what you saw originally that they wanted to say in that question that unlike poles attract north and the south attract like poles like here's a north against a north they repel it's actually pushing the magnets apart turn to the south poles same thing but if I take unlike poles a north and a south oh there's an attraction that's for the discussion questions well that's the video form of this lab Sorry that we have to do labs that way. It's much more fun having your hands on the equipment and putting currents through co coils and things and playing with iron cores and such. But while this college is shut down, this is our lab. All right.